Alrighty, welcome guys to the POD podcast and today we are talking all things masturbation and I'm joined by the wonderful Bianca, our social media manager, <laughs> give her a video. <laughs> um, but yeah, today we're talking about masturbation. I just want to put out a quick disclaimer. So those people who are asexual or they don't partake in masturbation because um, of religious reasons or they just choose for whatever personal oh, reason to not partake. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We completely understand and we support that. But this is for people who enjoy masturbation or who are curious about it and would like to learn more. Uh, because obviously there's a lot of people out there who don't know a lot about it and who are very confused and don't understand really how to experiment with their bodies. So this is for you. Yeah, it's just a little bit of tidbits that you can maybe take into the bedroom with you and exactly Alrighty. so firstly uh we just want to talk about the stigmas around masturbation so a lot of people don't um masturbate um obviously because of personal reasons but a big portion um, of these people don't masturbate because they don't know how to um or because there's a lot of stigmas around it i know so many girls um and even people who um don't masturbate because they think it's gross and it's, it's kind of almost pervy i guess to like touch themselves and discover their their bodies and enjoy pleasure within themselves and if they do um, and they don't want to talk about it they want to pretend that it doesn't exactly. happen. Like it's the thing that you do yeah. that nobody has to ever mention if that makes sense yeah they don't want to talk about it having that kind of conversation makes them uncomfortable i mean i've been on groups like there's a there's a girl group i'm on um for the particular area that i'm in and there's been conversations where um you know they'll speak about like masturbation or something like that um or sex and then there'll just be a bunch of people who leave the group because they just that kind of conversation makes them incredibly uncomfortable and I think it's mainly people mainly get uncomfortable I could be wrong speaking out of tone but mainly get uncomfortable just because it they feel like it's a taboo subject they feel like almost it's unladylike if that makes sense mm-hmm. to speak about sex to speak about masturbation because it's something that a lady shouldn't do and I think that's a big, yeah. a big misconception about masturbation I think it also stems from the fact that I again I could also just be talking out of my ass but I think it also stems from the fact that um we are inherently as women taught that our bodies are made for the pleasure of a man so the moment you take it away and you take that pleasure for yourself um it's it is taboo um and I I think we've been silenced a lot as women um and we've been told that we have a place and you know kind of really enjoying yourself and enjoying your body is something that's almost like nasty like I get a lot of the, I, I get it, I get the feeling that a lot of people think it's kind of like gross or like disgusting. I get what you're saying. I think a lot of people think that pleasure is a man's like men's business. Mm. Like it shouldn't be, like even in sex, you know, um, mm. that pleasure, a man enjoying sexual pleasure is more acceptable than a woman enjoying sexual pleasure. Exactly, and like there's also a spectrum of these stigmas. So there's a stigma where we see that a lot of women are told that they can't masturbate and then there's also this spectrum where men are told um that if they're not masturbating or if they're not experiencing like sexual pleasure they're like not cool you know so it's like the guy is not cool if he doesn't have all the sex and sexual pleasure and the woman is a slut or a whore if she has like too much sexual pleasure yeah i agree with you i mean um yeah, I think it's seen as weird if a man only has one sexual partner or chooses not to have any sexual partners. It's seen as a lot less weird if a female chooses that. Um, yeah. yeah. So I think it does and look I, I think- like there are stigmas for men and women surrounding sex and masturbation. Um, exactly. And also I think there are stigmas with literally any gender, any you know, not conforming, conforming. I think there's stigmas in general just about sex and masturbation. Um, Agreed. And I, and I think trans people and intersex people get those stigmas a lot more because obviously they're either transitioning or they have both genitals to some degree. Yeah. And so it's that lack of understanding and education that creates those stigmas. And there's almost like a form of like um, 
dislike or like taboo around that because they don't un- really understand what's going on there. You know what I think it is? And this is going to sound weird, but Ron and I were speaking about it the other day. So I'm in a uh, heterosexual relationship. Um, Mm. And we were chatting about like the difference between a heterosexual relationship and a homosexual relationship or whatever, you know, Mm. it's not necessarily, I mean, obviously you have different partners, um, but what we were saying basically is that with that, comes the fact that heterosexual people it's acceptable to hide the sex does that make sense but homosexual mm. people are literally forced to come out and say i want to sleep with a woman or, does that make sense so they're forced to be more inherent not sexual but they're forced to be more open about their sex which is not fair um obviously but and i think that's why a lot of stigma comes from like in trans communities and stuff like that with um, with masturbation and with sex is because that they're forced to be open and then people judge them for being open about it, even though people are forcing them to be open about it. Does that make sense? Yeah. And not only it does, that makes sense. And that's a very valid point. I, I agree with that completely. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Sorry, the dogs, the dogs in my area are losing their minds. So I'm just trying to like mute it as much as I can so I don't disturb this conversation. But yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, I think that's part of it. And then that also leads I agree. To- I, think what's, I think what's also really important to look at is how these stigmas can cause a lot of issues regarding um, like pleasure. And so, you know, if, if these stigmas really affect people, it prevents them from really experimenting with themselves and enjoying their bodies. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, if people are feeling that they can't, one, speak about their sexual pleasures, they might feel that they're so stigmatized. Does that make sense? Yeah, that they can't even speak to their own partner about what they actually like, or they feel that they can't experience or um, like explore what they actually want to explore, what they want to experience. So it leads their sexual experience in total to be a lot more closed, um, which obviously is very detrimental to um, orgasming. So that, yeah. yeah, I agree with that. And like, as you said, um, you know, if, if, if you don't, because what you also have to consider is masturbation is a safe space. It's a safe space for you to experiment understand your body and kind of discover what you like and what you don't like. And so if you are so stigmatized within yourself that you are too scared or you feel it's too taboo to really experiment, how will you, as you said, really kind of discover that enjoyment with your partner? Um, to think about. Yeah, and you know, like, it's like it's a safe place. that no one actually knows what you're doing in your bedroom. Does it make sense? exactly masturbating no one actually knows what you do and what you enjoy how you want to um achieve your common goal right <laughs> but we're so focused on the stigmas that we lose the pleasure that no one even has to really know about if you didn't want them to know about it. um exactly it's such a weird thing yeah so solo sex is a safe space it's where you can explore things like your kinks you can explore things like like different fetishes as well as like um you know um different spots on your body um that you might enjoy or not enjoy you know you can figure out if you don't enjoy it and that's also really exactly cool. i think some people feel self-conscious to say to a partner look like don't touch me there i don't like it you know what i mean mm-hmm. um because they might feel that they need to enjoy that but just because one area of your body you don't enjoy it doesn't mean that another area there isn't the same sort of stimulus or a similar stimulus that you can get from it. So if you explore exactly. your body, you can figure out which parts you don't like and which parts you do. And it's a lot easier to tell your partner, do this, I really like that, then don't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. I don't think that. Yeah. And there's also there's a bunch of different erogenous zones on people, on one woman, for example. Some women have very, very sensitive uh, nipples and breasts, so they might enjoy that. You know, um, some people might enjoy, like, um, you know, having, like, their necks touched or kissed or, you know, maybe it's a part on their arm or it might be, like, a specific spot in their stomach because there's also, like, non-sexual or, like, non-genital parts in your body. 
that are erogenous zones and that might stimulate sexual pleasure, as well as, for example, you know, you have the G and the A spot and the C spot, which is on a woman. And so the G spot, like if this were the vagina, the G spot is over here, the A spot is over here. So the A spot is further down in the vagina and the G spot is further to the entrance. And, um, you know, some people might not enjoy the A spot as much um, if it's being occasional touch because the A spot is a very deep penetration um, and the feeling is a lot deeper and it's a very like slow pleasure. Whereas the G spot is um, a lot more almost like impactful, um, you know, um, and, you know, like 78% to 80% of women um, orgasm through um, the C spot, which is your uh, clit. And so some people may, may orgasm through that, but then some people perhaps cannot, you know, so perhaps some women orgasm through their G spot or the A spot being touched. So it's again, it's just you discovering um, how you can pleasure yourself. Um, you know, there's also the um, anal spot, yeah. which is very pleasurable Earlier you for some people. Been- um, you mentioned something, I don't think in this podcast, but you mentioned something to me earlier about how you can actually find your G spot. So maybe mm. you want to like say that again so people can sort of understand what. Oh, yeah. So, so, so firstly, your G spot and your A spot are different pleasure zones or erogenous zones within your vagina as a woman. Um, and so um, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure if trans um, individuals or trans women have the same kind of erogenous zones we'll have to do more yeah. research on that transitioned into a woman though right so males have like a a g-spot in their anus essentially yeah they do, they do. and so uh, you might find anal is very pleasurable for you because you would still i think still have that g-spot i don't think they would that would change at all i don't think so either so you could still like try that and you could still try masturbating through the anus, if that makes sense. Like it doesn't necessarily just have to be front um, genitals. In the vagina, yeah. yeah. Um, and also how you're able to tell um, that this is a specific erogenous zone, especially if it's a spot. So if it's a G spot, an A spot, or if it's an anal spot, is that the skin um, in the vagina or in the anal um, is all that the anus um, is slightly rough. The texture is a lot more rough. So you have to think about the vagina and the anus and the texture inside is generally quite smooth. Um, but then those specific spots are slightly rougher and they almost have like an indentation. Yeah, they um, And so that's kind of like how you can tell um, if that's your specific spot. And again, you can just experiment and discover if you like that, uh, whether you like it or not, uh, you know, with solo sex and that's great and and explore your body don't feel that you know you have to do a certain thing because that's the way masturbation should be if that makes sense um yeah like you can explore your body touch your body in other ways don't feel that you have to only touch your clits or you only have to touch you know only have to insert exactly um exactly like run your fingers over your nipples run your fingers down your body if you want to just make it an experience yeah you enjoy test the waters like don't be afraid no one's literally no one's watching you it's just you yeah exactly and like as you said you know you couldn't have put it better the fact that um you know every part of your body is something that's unexplored so try it you know just uh, see how you feel and i guarantee you it could make your partner sex or your polysex uh polysex being polyamorous relationships yeah. your polysex a lot better and, 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 you, and you know even your solo sex better because you enjoy it more you have better orgasms um and i mean there's so many benefits to orgasming it increases your dopamine uh your dopamine so you know it makes you a lot happier um it's known to have actual health benefits yeah um where it it, it betters your health Actually, um and if they have regular sex i could be wrong they are less likely to experience prostate cancer yeah you see so i'm a professor professor whatever i'm not a medical doctor professional (laughs) but you know like there are very extreme benefits to sex and even masturbation yeah exactly and then i mean even like when we're talking about um for example anal um you know i know a lot of women um, feel that there's not a lot of pleasure in anal because either they haven't been able to find the spot or they find it very uh, painful upon penetration, whether it's penetration with a finger or a penis or a dildo or whatever. And your best friend 
um, with any kind of sex is lubrication. And lubrication doesn't just have to be lube because lube is very expensive. It's incredibly expensive. Um, your best can also be saliva. It can be certain creams. We're not doctors, yes. um, but you know, I know of people who use creams. With lube, like in general, um, do your research on the lube. Like if you're going to use condoms and lube, sometimes they're not compatible together. Um, certain lubes and certain mm. condoms. So just be careful what you choose to do, because the last thing you want. And and you know, there's also a thing where people are allergic to um, latex. Is a big one. That the latex or like certain products with no lube. So just be aware of that. Um, you can spot the best way to, like if you're worried about it, mm -hmm. spot test it on something that's not in your genital area. Um, that that will happen. Tell you, yeah, that will tell you if you're allergic. But also with anal, I wanted to get back to that. Like lube's great and definitely do like use some sort of lubricants, whatever you choose to lube, uh, to use, but don't just go for it. Like just because you've lubed up the area doesn't mean you can just like penetrate with a penis or a dildo straight away. Like mm -hmm. the anus has to be prepared before anal sex. It's not like just a, you know, simple, quick fix. It's something you can go into. It's the same with the vagina, you know. Um, as we mentioned, uh, I, I, we didn't say it in the podcast, but, you know, foreplay is your best friend. Yeah. And foreplay gets your body ready. You can do foreplay through um, kissing if you're with a partner. Or you could do it if you're a woman with nipple play. Or um, <laughs> if you're a man with different zones, you could touch your, your balls. I know that's a big stigma. We spoke about that previously, about how men don't like to touch their balls. And like, that is a big, like erogenous zone for a lot of men, you know, experiment with that, get your body turned on. You know, if you're a woman, maybe try to play with your click for a bit. If you're a man, maybe play with the head of your penis or, you know, vice versa, whether you're a trans or intersex or whatever, whatever works for you, whatever pleases you, touch that area and get your body prepped. And also there's something called the finger method with anus, uh, it's kind of sex or anal sex. Before you put anything big in there, Use your smallest finger, stick it up, have a little twirl, live your best life, and then like increase the finger size. And then when it's like after yeah. you've played and you've fingered and you've done whatever, then you can start putting bigger things like yeah. um and please don't put weird you know your, your areas. Please don't put normal things. Like, so I've I've heard stories of people who put deodorant cans up there. You know, like there's a reason why dildos were made, you know? Um, and there's a reason why the body is shaped in a specific way. Um, different cans don't go up there. <laughs> but I'll say it anyways. I went to my female doctor and um, she was telling me a story, you know, like, so they have to do like a pap smear thing. So, you know, they like tell a joke before. So you're not so awkward spreading your legs for this doctor. Anyhow, she told me the story that this woman put a beetroot up her vagina. And um, the beetroot got stuck up the woman's vagina. But she didn't want to say anything because she put a beetroot up her vagina. So she left it. And then she started getting very sick. Um, and like there were issues with the vagina was starting to like smell and stuff and this doctor said the moment she opened her legs like you could smell this beetroot and it turned out like the beetroot was actually rotting in her vagina yeah so like please don't do that <laughs> don't do it she was like experiencing purple discharge or something that's why she went to the doctor because the beetroot's obviously purple <laughs> yeah so don't do it just get a dildo like you can get them on numerous online platforms um, if you want the discretion otherwise there are like physical sex shops if you want to go see mm -hmm. the actual size and shape um, and even clicks has just introduced this small brand um where they have like sex toys they have like a dildo they have a little vibrator and i don't think um, and that's expensive i don't i could be speaking they're not expensive yeah they're no they're not expensive. They're like they're under 300 rand yeah which is a really good price for a second bills after you stuck something that shouldn't be up your hoo-ha is going to be a lot less than a lot more than 300 rand so just get it done right the first time exactly yeah. exactly but yeah you know again um i think what we've kind of established from this whole podcast is that in order for you to really enjoy yourself with partner sex or poly sex you really need to masturbate and like experiment with your body. It's really, really important. Not only that, I mean, um, you don't have to do it to enjoy partner sex, just to, you know, 
like, yeah enjoy it with yourself with masturbating just if you enjoy it enjoy it it's like there's no point in pretending that you don't enjoy it there's no point in not doing it exactly feel stigmatized like do what you want to do and just you know have fun with it like no one's there to watch you no exactly. one's there to judge you um and like obviously it does have like a few benefits like um increasing pleasure during sex but like it has your own personal benefits as well and some people may be- yeah health benefits and all of that you know masturbation is great and there shouldn't be stigmas around it and you know just experiment we are going to be putting posts up um we'll also be putting up a poll um asking people about their favorite um obviously we'll be anonymous but we'll uh, be asking people about their favorite anonymous kind of masturbation techniques um and then we'll be making a post about that so if there's anything you ever want to experiment or try out that post is there um and hopefully can help you class goes up so go have a look at it it will already be on our instagram and facebook pages so exactly yeah awesome guys i think we spoke about quite a lot um yeah, if, if there's anything you felt that we could incorporate or any other information we could speak about or something perhaps we didn't touch on because there's so much to talk about with regards to masturbation, let us know. Um, and yeah, we can make a post about it or make another podcast, but it was great. I enjoyed this. I think this was really helpful. And if someone has like a question for us about, I don't know, maybe mm-hmm. the way the vagina works or the way the um, penis works like feel free to dm us the question we won't use your name but we'll probably answer it in a future podcast so exactly if you like dm us or email us our socials and everything's always linked so exactly awesome okay well um i don't know how to outro this yeah well you do you boo let's go (laughs) 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 Bye bye, let's do a body experiment. We'll see you next week. Maybe who can give us some tips.